Yeah, the biggest challenges which we are facing as peasants, the issue whereby our land is being grab, grabbed away, given to the multinational corporations to invest, especially in our own territories, where we have been practicing our own agriculture, using our own method of production, which don't really hurt the environment. And also the other challenge, they are also introducing these farming technologies and also they are trying to get the farmers to, 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 to get their systems by introducing contract farming and at a later stage when a farmer fails to pay back because of the climate change, then at the end of the day he commits or she commits suicide or else she's put in jail because she failed to pay back the debts. Those are mainly the challenges which we are facing right now and maybe the most critical challenges is also who is really in this position of allowing the investors to come to our countries? Probably it's our governments because they don't really know the impact of these investment processes. The problem we are facing with these multinational corporations, the moment they know what we are thinking, what we are doing, they take it over then they also use it in their own language. But to my understanding, food sovereignty means I'm really in control of what I'm producing. I'm in control of my own seeds. I'm not borrowing seeds from these big business companies. I'm not buying any seeds. I'm not buying any fertilizers. I'm not buying any chemicals. But I'm using my own natural resources to produce enough to feed my family, to feed the world, to feed everyone around the world, to feed even the animals, because we cannot speak of food security, which brings, I don't know what type of food from anywhere, from, from anywhere else, but is this the healthy food we are talking about? So food sovereignty, it contains the healthier part of the food, how it has been grown. So that is where we are practicing agroecology to meet food sovereignty. To my knowledge, seeds is life. Seed is life. If there was not a seed, I was not supposed to be on earth, but just because the seed was there. And we are here, what we are eating, all comes from the seeds. So it is very important to protect the seed so that we really maintain our culture and norms of using our own indigenous seeds, not borrowing from other big companies who are introducing these GMOs, which are not healthy for our livelihood, for our environment, for everyone. We can really build a strong voice coming together, bringing together all these networks. But for me, this is not the only solution because we have done these campaigns for years and years and nothing's really changing. But what we, I think, could be the basic, the basis of all is to go down to the people, to educate the women, to educate the youth, to educate the peasants, the indigenous people, the fisher folks, so that they really understand and are aware of all these happenings. Then from there, we can get information, strategies on how to solve, because the main targets are our governments. Because here we cannot meet with our government, but at national level, we can also try to use these spaces to make sure after training the people, after training the peasants, then from there we can also lobby our governments, sitting with them, not really here, look what is happening here. We are not there where these big corporates are, are really organizing themselves, but we are here, we are talking on behalf of them, and they are really uh, making decisions on behalf of farmers.